Hello everybody and welcome to the Whiskey Dictionary. Today we are going to be blending some more whiskeys out of my bar and I love this concept. It's only the second time I've done it on the channel but it's really awesome. I've gotten tons of good feedback. I've actually gotten a lot of entries today. Um, I think you guys maybe maybe missed the first one or maybe just hadn't thought about it but regardless if anybody's curious or feels inspired during the course of the live stream in the description there is a link over to a form where you could submit your own blends. There's also a link over to my full collection although I need to add a couple of bottles to it. However, I wanted to say some uh, highs around the uh, the table here. Why don't we take a minute? Uh, so obviously Steve Steve A is in the chat, which is awesome. Saw Spencer's in the chat as well. Uh, Spencer and I are going to hang out tomorrow night. He's up in my area. And uh, I think we're going to go out, probably get a burger or something like that tomorrow night. So it should be fun. Let's see. Who else? Is we got Donner Pass. Always nice to see you. Uh, we got Teak, Teak Pack. <laughs> Teak Pack. Sure, why not? Um I saw you were in here a bit early, which is awesome. Thanks for joining uh, early. So, it's funny. Uh, I know a lot of you guys watch the um, D&D live stream that I do, the Dungeons and & Drams, and, and I'm so used to streaming that, that uh, it's funny having like a whole different setup <laughs> on my desktop. But it's great. I really like it, actually. I'm having a lot of fun with that that campaign. If anybody has any interest, it's, I think it's worth checking out. But if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing it. All right, so uh, let's see. Alex is here. Alex sent me about, what, like a dozen samples the other day? Unfortunately, they many of them uh, spilled in the box that they came in. However, Alex was smart enough to individually wrap each one in a separate Ziploc bag. Um, so although the box smelled pretty good, it did not leak. So that was, that was very good thinking, Alex. Um, just mental note to anybody out there who's shipping whiskey around. Uh, you're very bad people. You definitely shouldn't ship whiskey ever. And if you do, definitely don't put any sort of like noisemaker in the box because, you know, you don't want people to, to not hear the swishing of the whiskey. <laughs> but if you decide to ship whiskey around, um, they make these little things. They're called Boston Browns, I think, something like that. And they're these little bottles. But what you want are the ones that come with the little plastic cap underneath the cap. It's like a little, honestly, it looks like a little nipple and it goes inverted into the glass or in the bottle and it will do a world of wonder for not uh, spilling. Also, tape the top. So, none of these things that, um, you know, Alex didn't do, he did everything right except for the little plastic nipple. So, I'm more just telling everybody else. All right. How do you join your D&D play? Uh, so, Mark, um, the channel is called Dungeons and Drams. And I live stream with... Uh, Clifton uh, from Bourbon Bites, Ed from The Rocket Review, Jason from The Mash and Drum, and my friend Molly, uh, and we do that every Tuesday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. However, I believe we're going to be changing over to Mondays in a couple of weeks, so we'll see. Hey, D. Rish, nice to see you. That's my buddy Dave. Um, Dave and I were drinking some some whiskeys here, actually, a few a couple of weeks ago, actually, already. Oh, man, we need to uh, get together again, Dave. Dave lives in the same town as me now. He used to live a little further away, so we kind of don't have any excuses not to just constantly be drinking together. But, you know, we're both a little bit lazy, I think. <laughs> so Dave's drinking some Ardbeg. So let me tell you guys a little bit about what I'm going to be doing tonight, and then we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit more, because why not? It's fun. Um, so Blend Bill's Bar. The whole concept here is that I have my entire bar ready for you to peruse at your... Uh, leisure and you can go in and check whatever you want and if you see a couple of bottles that you think would look good or work well together for example let's just say let's pick something out of the blue um let's say that you wanted to try to recreate like ardbeg ugadale right so you're thinking to yourself okay i want some ardbeg and i want it to be sherried so you know bill's got uh i don't even know what i have sherried up there i've, I've got a number of sherried whiskeys let's let's just take what the heck let's take the uh the Redbreast PX Sherry cask over there. Let's mix that with some Ardbeg 10 and see if we can reproduce Oogadale. And, I mean, if you put something in there like, hey, you know what, try this next to your Oogadale, I'd probably do it on the stream. Why not? But that's the idea, is try to come up with a blend that you think would taste good. And at the end of the this, uh, I'm going to go through three of them tonight. At the end of this, whoever submitted the best one, I'm going to ship them a sample of the blend that they created, because I think that'd be kind of cool. And uh, depending on how I'm doing on supply, maybe I'll send them some of the losers, too. <laughs> um, all right, so let me tell you guys what we have on the docket for tonight. So we have, uh, well, I guess we'll just start off with the first one here. So this one was submitted by Michael K. And it is two parts McKellen 12. Now, in this case, it's the double cask that I have. 
Um, so the lights are a little tough with that white, but it's the, the McKellen 12 double cask. And then it's one part rare breed bourbon. Now he didn't specify the bourbon. I have the rare breed rye and I have the rare breed, breed bourbon. So I'm going to assume that he meant the bourbon. Um, let me actually move this down just a tad because it's kind of taking up some space. I'll probably take that off the, off the, um, yeah, I'll just take that off. I'll bring it up, up before I uh, sip or maybe while I'm sipping. So we're going to do two parts of this, one part of this. And the way that I'm going to measure this is using something that I totally forgot to bring down with me. Um, so I guess I'm just going to eyeball it. Usually I bring a jigger uh, or some sort of, oh, you know what? Eh, no, I'm not going to do that. So it's going to be a little less scientific than it normally would be. But we're going to do two parts to one part and see how this goes. Oh, that's interesting. McKellen, I, I know that McKellen gets a lot of hate, and to some degree, some of it's kind of deserved. Uh, mostly it's just the price gouging that really bothers me, especially because their product quality's kind of decreased in, in recent years, um, to the point where I, I always had it in my mind that it would be really cool to buy a McKellen M, um, especially with, you know, like, just kind of make that, make that work. Help me buy a McKellen M. And there's a couple of them near me. I actually, I have the capability to buy a McKellen M if I want to. Uh, but it's like five grand, so I'm not going to do that, <laughs> especially knowing that it might not be as good as it was in previous years. All right, uh, let me interrupt myself for a sec. So Steve says, uh, if someone says rare breed and doesn't specify the rye, they mean the bourbon. Yeah, I kind of assume the same thing. All right, so we're going to go two parts, and then I'm going to talk for a little bit while this thing rests. So we're going to go one, two. Like I said, very scientific. I may text the wife and ask her to bring me down uh, one of my one of my measuring things all right so that was about one you know what i'm gonna do exactly that give me 30 seconds i'm gonna i'm gonna text text the wife and say uh can you bring me down a jigger thanks she's upstairs watching tv so she'll probably She'll, she'll be good. All right, let's see. We've got Alex. Every time I go back to McKellen, I do enjoy them, but when the 18 is $400, the 18 is $400 now? That's insanity. That doesn't make any sense. The 18 was one of the first eight, uh, sorry, the McKellen 18 was one of the first 18s I ever had. Um, that and the Glenn Livet. Is it Glenn Livet? I think it was Glenn Livet. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Um, but either way, like, that's insane that it's $400. There's just no way that's worth that. All right, so let me ask you guys. Uh, first off, who who here likes to experiment with blending whiskeys at their own place? And if you do, do you do it using kind of like an infinity bottle or do you just kind of get creative and, and be like, I want some of this and I want some of that and I'm going to pour some together and I'm going to drink it and it's going to be good. Um, I personally don't do a ton of blending. It's actually why I challenge myself to do this concept as a live stream because I'm not extremely good at it yet. I mean, it's something I'd like to get more interested in. But it's something that I wanted to actually lean on the expertise of some of you uh, to have me try something cool and creative and, and kind of get a feel for it. So I figured we could, uh, like I try to do with everything on my channel, I was interested, so I started doing stuff about it. And that's, that's how I, why I started the channel in the first place. <laughs> uh, let's see. So uh, Mark says, McKellen has been on my shit list for years now, but Ardbeg is close behind. Um it's good whiskey, very nice distillate, and aged bottled well, but just too damn pricey. Yeah, uh, you can get a Glenfiddich uh, Grand Cru. Now, I've seen that a few times, a 15, and still have some leftover pizza. I've been th very tempted to get that uh, Glenfiddich. That one, I, I don't recall the last time I was so tempted. So hold on one sec. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. So now I have some uh, scientificness to my blends. Uh, but we'll, we'll make this one work all by itself. All right, so I think I've swirled this enough. I think it's probably, I mean, unless I'm going to let this thing sit for a couple hours like Steve A. did, which, Steve, I, I can totally appreciate the fact that you did that. I thought about it. What I was thinking about doing, and I'd be interested in what you all would like me uh, like to see. I was going to pour, basically for these three, I was going to pour them ahead of time and then let them sit with like a topper on it or something like that. Um, and then I was going to pour some fresh ones on the stream and then compare the two, which sounds like a pretty good experiment. Maybe I'll just do that on, on the uh, third time I do this. But either way, I'd be interested to know if uh, that couple hours would make any real difference. So, okay. So I can tell you right away, the McKellen is overtaking on the nose here. So, which is, which is not a bad thing. Um, when you're talking just something like rare breed, I'm going to just snow, sniff this. Yeah, um, the nose, that cork is ready to fall off. Wow. All right, let me uh, let me 
can get that cork a little wet there. Um, anyway, when you are adding rare breed, I was very worried that the bourbon notes were going to just completely take over. Now, when we're talking double cask, this is sherry and um, hand-picked sherry seasoned American and European oak casks. Okay. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I was I was curious though if the sherry and the and the bourbon casks were gonna, you know, fight and who would win. So very much so the sherry. I like that experiment. Make sure to use toppers with a really good seal. Now, funny thing, you you say that, uh, Steve. Now you were privy to some of this, and anybody who's coming to the Bastards Ball next week will get to see um, kind of a, a new piece of merchandise that I'm going to be doing. Now, some of you might remember when I did the glass toppers that fit into the top. They have the silicone around the side. Um, so I, I work with the company that that makes those, and I loved the glass toppers. And actually, I, I, they sold out of them a couple of times, and I just kind of never rebought them. Co when COVID happened, they they had to stop their production for a little bit, um, and I just never really got back to it. However, they make these really cool bamboo ones. But not only that, they also make um, acacia uh, acacia wood. Uh, as well as the glass. So what I did is I ordered 25 of each of the three. I'm going to bring them to the Bastards Ball, and I'm going to see if they sell. And if they do, they'll be on the store probably in about a week and a half or so. Um, yeah, thanks, Steve. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so as far as the nose goes, now you're getting a very boring, at least in my mind, sherry nose from here, but that's to be expected from the McKellen 12. It's not going to be like the best of the best. It's It smells like a very, in my mind, like a kind of a watered-down um oloroso and it's just not it's not like super exciting but i do like sherry so i'm interested to see how this is going to be so here's my prediction and you're right now you're just like shut up bill and try a sip but I'm, I'm making this last so i figure the more i talk the more it will marry as well but the way i'm looking at this and the way i'm expecting this to go is that it's going to taste like sherry but i actually think the wateriness that the mckellen um uh 12 it's it's 43 percent, but i have always considered this to be kind of a watery whiskey i think the rare breed is going to give that some more robustness give it a little bit more body and i actually think this is going to end up as a really good blend so so spencer likes the glass toppers those bamboo tops that seal look really nice yeah it, mark they they came out looking super good um i don't know if i have the image on my desktop here but if i find it later i'll i'll drop a just a screenshot here so you guys can see what they they look like Obviously, I think they look good. I wouldn't have bought them otherwise, but uh, maybe I'm a little biased, but I think that they came out looking cool. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste of this. So cheers to everybody. Thank you guys for coming back to my live stream. I'm going to try to make this a habit, doing it on uh, Thursday nights at 9 p.m. I'm not sure who I'm competing with at the moment, but it doesn't much matter. I um, I want to get back into live streaming. I think it's a, a good use of time, and it's nice to actually get to talk to all of you. Um, that's kind of how I like to run my live streams. It's not really regimented and, and structural it's more hey let's talk about whiskey while i have a loose topic so if you guys have any questions especially anybody who's new to whiskey who happens to just be dropping in then by all means ask we'll totally derail this whole thing and just talk about whiskey all right hey donald yeah i mean the the nose again it, it's right, shut up bill take a sip cheers everybody Okay, so my prediction was pretty pretty right, actually. It is still a little thin, um, but the finish is pretty good. Actually, this is interesting. I know, right? <laughs> Derailed by whiskey talk. However, will we survive? Um, so this is interesting. All right, let me let me see if I can break this down. Now, as far as sherry goes, now I'm I'm reasonably sure this is Oloroso. I I don't I don't recall. So if anybody wants to correct me or confirm, um. Do, 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 do. It doesn't say. Yes, it does. All right, so it is Oloroso. It tastes like Oloroso, so I was going to be surprised, but, you know, I'm not perfect either. Okay, so here's the deal. This tastes like a thin Oloroso sherried whiskey, almost like, what do I have back here? You know, like the Turconnell, um, the sherried version that I have of the Turconnell. Hopefully you guys can hear me okay. The sherried version that I have of the Turconnell is pretty thin as well, but I have others I'm trying to think exactly what this tastes like. Um, huh. I'm just looking around. There's so many damn whiskeys here. I know some of you have like even way more whiskeys than I have, but this there's a lot of whiskeys here. Um, oh, you know what? How about like Highland Park? Like Highland Park 12 might be a half decent comparison to to the thinness in the in the sherry there, right? 
Um, at least that's that's definitely as soon as I saw it that. So I'll go with that. But the finish actually gets much better here. Mm hmm. It's funny I said that just as Steve put that up. Um, so I really like the the finish. Um, but that's that's about it. What I could see, though, is that this is definitely a better than the sum of its parts kind of thing. The rare breed is almost entirely lost as far as the flavor goes, which I think is fine because it's a two to one ratio. So they weren't leaning on the flavor of uh, our, uh, let's see, who was this? It was uh, Michael. Michael wasn't leaning on the flavor that was the rare breed. He was probably leaning on the, the proof point and the, the robustness. So I think that was a pretty good call. Um, definitely like this one for the improvement over the, the two separate parts. All right, we're going to put that one to the side here. All right, so let's see. Uh, do you happen to know how the live crabs for Crab Topper were harvested? Like, to go di uh, like, do diving teams go down and collect them for shipping? Okay, great question. Um, hey, David, nice to see you. All right, so here's here's the question. So this comes from Alex. The Crab Topper whiskey that I did recently. So I'll, I'll just for anybody who doesn't know, the, the concept is they make this bourbon and it ended up being a four or four and a half year bourbon. And then they, instead of, it's not like, boiling crabs in the whiskey or anything like that what they do is they have a very specific amount of water and then they have a very specific poundage of crabs and in uh they said it was something like a thousand of these crabs uh would make up the the poundage that they needed and what happens is these crabs just get trapped in the in the crab traps and and every other type of trap that fishing um ships will 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 have so they just have these crabs and rather than throw them back because they're really tiny they're hard to pick out of there um tamworth tamworth yeah tamworth distillery just said like hey give us those crabs yeah we'll pay pay you for them of course um and then what they do is they take a thousand crabs put them in this certain amount of of water and then boil them alive of course you know whatever it's it's seafood then they take that water and that's the water that they use to proof down the bourbon and that's why it tastes the way it does now the there is also other stuff in that water um basically think of like old bay spice it's like there's a bunch of stuff there's coriander there's um cloves there's like like basil there's oregano there's like all kinds of stuff i'm probably don't quote me on any of that except for the coriander i remember that distinctly um and that's how they ended up doing it so to answer your question they just come up anyway so instead of throwing them back and kind of picking them out they buy them all right uh let's see drinking old forest or 1910 while streaming nice nice i i love that whiskey hey bill on your wreck i went to check out norfolk wine and spirits wow thanks yeah man i totally that's that place is great and you would never expect it looking at the outside of it like this is this is for any of anybody who has seen a place like this which i'm sure you have picture like just a store that has like norfolk wine and spirits and, like, it, you just walk in there and be like, okay, I'm going to buy a Bud Light and maybe a handle of Jack. And, oh, my goodness, they have an Ardbeg 10 on the shelf. Like, this is crazy. But, no, dude, you walk in this place and you just look and you're like, holy crap, I could literally spend tens of thousands of dollars and and be so happy about it. Um, I almost bought a, what was it? It's a, a Redbreast, the, the 20, not the 21, 25? I forget which one they did somewhat recently, but it was, it was, they had it for $300 and I was hemming and hawing cause I didn't want to spend 300 bucks on a bottle of whiskey. Um, uh, shout out, join the Patreon, please help me afford whiskey. Um, but, but I didn't pull the trigger and then within weeks, the price went up to 500 bucks and I was just like, well, I'm definitely not getting it now, but that really sucked. Um, all right. So Steve says, I do get a little extra wood note over the regular Mac 12, but I do think that the relatively neutral uh, whiskey at high proof is more important to kick it up a bit. I agree. It was the 27. Thank you, Donner Pass. I knew I wasn't right, but I, I knew somebody would help me out there. Been hearing of 5 Hem for great scotch selection uh, for years, but haven't gotten... Oh, probably them. Uh, they're from New York City yet. All right. Uh, do, do, do. Seagrass goes for 71 bucks. Yeah, that's pretty good. I wish we had stores like that. We only have fancy train stations uh, as stores that are run and owned by the government. Yeah, well, that's a little different. I can't help you there. All right, let's go ahead and move on to our second entry here. So this one comes from Kyle. And I think Kyle Kyle is is a maniac, I think, is what he is. He wants one part red breast cast strength and one part Octomore. <laughs> so... 
Kyle, you're you're a madman, and I love it. So we're gonna do this. Um, I had a lot of, I had to I had to think really hard about what order I wanted to do these in, because any time that you're gonna have Octomore, it's gonna be hard to follow. But I will say that I'm still pretty sure that the th the third entry is going to hold up, um, at least as far as what this is about to do to my tongue. So let me open these so I don't talk over the sound. All right. So for those that don't know, I have the Octomore. Um, this is the ten year aged. Uh, that's the one that they did this year. So this one, I had I woke up at like six thirty in the morning, um, and I had an email from them. I actually, I'll I'll be honest, I didn't know it was coming out. <laughs> and then I saw the email come from them. Hey, uh, this is for sale. Buy it now because it's going to go fast. And I think there were only 3,000 bottles, something like that. Um, it's distillery exclusive limited edition release. So I get on and I'm like number 600 in the queue. And I'm like, there's no way I'm getting this thing. I'm not getting this bottle. And then lo and behold, uh, I get dropped into the, the form and I fill it out and I bought it. And I think it was like 250 bucks or $210, something like that. Um, and it was super good. It was, uh, I mean, I, I'm enjoying this. It's my first bottle of Octomore that I've bought. Uh, far from the first I've had, but every one I've had has been awesome. Um, so, Spencer, yeah, I'm not too worried about blowing the palate here, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to do one part cask strength. Yeah. And then one part Octomore. Yeah. Blink. Oh, this is going to be so tasty. Even if this does blow my palate, I'm not even going to be sad. <laughs> I would never, ever, ever have thought to combine these two. But I think maybe they just want me to be drunk. I'm not really sure. This is 56.3, and the cask strength is... Where is it? 55.8. Oh, man, that's so low. It's getting so low, and you can't freaking find this stuff anymore. I am not going to be happy when that bottle goes away. Oh, let's see. So we got cigars. Uh, Mark, yeah, you know, cigars, I, I have zero problem with cigars. I've, like, I've had a, I've only, honestly, I've only had a couple. Um, my first cigar was, my dad let me have a puff on a cigar uh, when I was real young. Um, I want to say, like, seven, maybe, not even. Um, and I, I'm sure it was to prove a point of, like, hey, this is disgusting, don't ever have this. And it worked, because I never smoked cigarettes, I never smoked cigars, I never smoked weed, I never did any of that stuff, because I just can't stand the thought of it. Um, but a couple of years ago, I went to New York City with a friend of mine. Uh, we drank a ton, and then we ended up at a cigar bar, a scotch and cigar bar. And uh, I ended up, you know, having a cigar and scotch. And it was very, very enjoyable. So I can totally see why. But here's the problem. I don't need another hobby to take all my money away. <laughs> and uh, cigars would definitely be among that. Also, just in general. Um, it's not like I'd be, you know, replacing it with a gym membership. <laughs> so... Which I could certainly use. All right, let's see. I'm not sure I've ever even considered blending sherried scotch and high proof bourbon, so props for creativity. Yeah, I, I agree, Spencer. I uh, wish we had. All right, so let's see. That sounds nice. I think we saw Jeremy do a video on that story. All right, blah, blah, blah. What else we got? Uh, was just in the Whiskey Row live stream and thought I'd come say hi. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? Uh, never had the Octomore. Would love to try tonight having the Cory Vrecken. Oh, Cory Vrecken is one of my favorite whiskeys, um, CPM. That is an awesome, awesome whiskey. Yeah, pretty much everything by Ardbeg. Even even some of their like more uh, like lackluster releases. I think that's a good word. Lackluster releases that they've done recently. I still don't think that they're bad. They're just not... It's almost like Ardbeg has such a high standard in my mind that when they release these limited releases and they're not more incredible than the the standard stuff i'm super disappointed for example the fermentation right so fermentation was like oh okay this is maybe like ardbeg 10 maybe the finish is a little different maybe um i would love to try the scorch or the ardbeg um i saw the ardbeg the ardbeg uh in down in Rainham, Massachusetts, actually, uh, or maybe it was maybe it was Bridgewater or Taunton somewhere. It was in that area, and uh, I saw it, but it was stupid. It was like three hundred bucks, and again, I'm not going to spend that much money on a on a whiskey, um, unless there's a really good reason. Has the Corey changed much over time? I'm I'm going to throw that one back to the chat. What do you guys think? I've I've bought two bottles of Corey um, in the last few years. To my knowledge, they were pretty similar. At least I liked them both a lot. I'm sure that they're probably a little bit different, 
at this point, but but I'm not sure. That's a good question. All right. Part of part of this is letting this these whiskeys sit for a little while too, because I do want them to to kind of get to know each other. <laughs> Never stays around long enough to notice. Yeah, that's for sure. The Cory Vrecken, that was the last bottle of Cory that I finished was back before I just got this obsessive I can't possibly finish any bottle because I might need it. Um I was actually just talking in the Discord earlier today about how how it's going to be when I someday stop doing this channel, which is not going to be for any any length of time. It was actually really good. I took the week, uh, summer off, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but it's not going to be anytime soon. But at some point, I will stop the channel, and I will have all of this whiskey, likely very much more. And I'm just going to have to, like, drink that over time. <laughs> Either that or have, like, the best party ever. <laughs> Anyway, all right, let's go ahead. Um, is my video glitching? I, I haven't noticed anything on the stream here, uh, but it's definitely possible. All right, let's go ahead and have a sip of this. So again, for anybody paying attention, this is the Octomore 10-year age from this year and the red breast cask strength at a, believe, a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, let me double check that real quick. Yeah, one-to-one -one ratio. All right, cheers, everybody. Mm. 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 Hmm. Huh. Okay. Wow, that's very different. Um so here's the thing. All right, so just breaking this down into parts and then we'll go into what this actually tastes like, right? So the red breast cast strength, it is delicious for what it is. But I wouldn't say it's, like, incredibly flavorful. It's high proof, and it's Irish, and it handles the proof perfectly. It's still really smooth and wonderful. But it's not going to hold up to an Octomore. Like, there's nothing else it's adding other than more proof. However, in this case, it actually, because it's kind of that... Neutral is definitely the wrong word, but because it's less flavorful, it actually tones down the Octomore a little bit. Which is not why I drink Octomore. <laughs> you don't drink Octomore to have it be... It's like saying, oh yeah, I eat a, like a, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, or a Cal Carolina Reaper for the flavor, right? You, you, you don't. But in this case, where it is toning down the Octomore, it actually brought out some of the more nuanced flavors of the Octomore, which I'll go into in a second here because I'm going to have to have another sip. Um, let's go ahead and do that, actually. Hmm. Yeah, this is pretty much just toned down Octomore. And there is like a lemony flavor to this as well. There is very high proof, but it, between both of them, it carries it real well. Um, both of them, I would say, are handle their proof extremely well. Um, however, the finish on the Octomore is every bit as... Uh, challenging every bit as challenging as it typically is so i would not say this is better than than individually um so i i'm like immediately gonna put this one in third place uh but i don't know about the third one maybe it's a piece of crap i don't know spencer designed it so it's probably not very good <laughs> but yeah unfortunately uh unfortunately was it mark i think it was mark oh kyle i'm sorry the first uh first guy was mike kyle i don't even know You'd think I could keep track of four-letter names. Sorry, Kyle. Not a winner. But it'll get drank later. Likely, while I'm watching the premiere of the new Lord of the Rings series that I think comes out today. Uh, so for anybody else who's planning on watching that, I'm, I'm pretty hyped. Hopefully you guys are. But we'll see. All right. So the those are going to the side. Now this third one here. Oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, you've got a really good point. I'm going to add a little bit of water and see so for anybody who hasn't taken the time to get one of these so this is just a regular old dropper but this is like a four ouncer i think or maybe an eight i think four ounce this is awesome you don't really need anything fancy to add water to your to your whiskey of course you could just use a spoon and drip it in there or whatever but i like the precision that this gives so i'm gonna do that that's a really good idea i'm gonna go four drops i normally go three I'm going four. All right. <sighs> this 
smells awesome. It just smells awesome. Do, do you guys generally like peat? Like, show of hands in the in the chat. Who's a fan of peat? Sorry, I, when I say peat, obviously I mean like I'm talking heavy, heavy smoked whiskey. I mean I know we're talking about Ardbeg in the chat, so I'm gonna guess that uh, you guys are probably fans. Yeah, you know it, David. All right, so Steve, I could have guessed that about you, Steve, actually. Hmm. Hey, IC86, nice to see you. Uh, so he's a fan of peated scotches. All right, peat scotches, best scotch, except Beaumore. Yeah, I agree with that. It's not a great representation. So uh, who was it that, that suggested? Um, so Canadian Chris... You you kind of helped me out here. I don't even know why it didn't occur to me to add water. Probably just because I rarely ever do. Um, that improved it quite a bit, actually. It uh, the flavors the flavors are are much more sharp in a good way. Um, let's think here. So, hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. So it's it's got. It, it's got yeah it has a much more sugary texture to it which is is bizarre because i did not see that coming it must be coming from the red breast um it got considerably sweeter and it is cutting down on the burn uh in the in the finish for sure although it could be could be that i'm just like a little bit more used to it i don't dislike pete just not in the mood for pete that often yep fair uh pete rules hands up hands up yeah all right cool yep uh I own a brick of Irish peat. Does that count? Uh, it does. However, check this out. So this is cool. So a while back, some of you have seen this. So a while back, um, somebody who, who watches the channel, I think it's Ron. Uh, I think he's got a channel called Ron's Woodworking Channel or Ron's Woodworking, something like that. He, I ended up having a um, stave of uh, peated, I don't remember what it was, but it was from Broken Barrel Distillery. And their whole deal is that they they break up barrels of this other stuff, and then they use that to help flavor flavor the whiskey. Uh, they'll actually put the staves into a barrel with the whiskey. So in this case, I had a, a um, chunk of peated something or other, and uh, he cut it up and he made a pen out of part of it, and then he uh, made like a little holder out of the other thing. And this still, even like months later, still has a faintest hint of really really good smell to it. Um, so that's really cool. I, I've always thought this is a cool little gift. And for anybody who's noticed it, it's been up here for a very long time. Although the power glove is new to being up there. Uh, I actually just put that up up today. I use the ter term peat particular to describe myself. Uh, just saw you here. Anyway, fun to watch. Hey. Hey, John. Yeah, I, I haven't been streaming very often, but I'm getting back into it. So, all right, let me actually talk about that a little bit. Well, let me restate i'm gonna pour my third one and while that's resting i'm gonna talk about some stuff all right so we have the submission from spencer nav uh spencer mav sorry who is in the chat right now um i'm gonna put this in the damn fine dram glass so i'm gonna also rinse this out a little bit because we can't have the um yeah all right you know what i will always have an extra on hand so I'm gonna pour some water into the this guy and just kind of rinse it out. I didn't bother with the first one because it wasn't likely to, you know, have a problem. But Octomore is definitely gonna taint whatever we're doing here. All right. Plus, not the worst thing to have some water. <laughs> Dude, I always am playing with power. All right. So we got a damn fine dram. We are going to go two parts Remus Repeal Reserve number four. All right. Actually, uh, so two parts of this, one part Old Forester and one part Woodford. So let me take that off just so you can watch. So the deal with um, the channel, so many of you have likely noticed that I haven't been making videos or anything pretty much all summer. And I did say something, like I, I didn't just disappear with no word, um, but I needed a break. You know, I've been doing the channel for seven and a half years, maybe eight years, something like that. It started in 2015, so whatever that works out to. And at some point, it becomes a little robotic, becomes a little routine, and uh, I just wasn't feeling it. So rather than be like, oh, I'm done whiskey tube, I figured I'd just take a break. And it was good. I'm glad I did. Because actually, one thing that was really cool is with uh, the Dungeons & Drams thing that I started in March, 
that got me doing all kinds of different kinds of video editing um because i've been putting together like you know episode recaps and shorts and uh little intro videos and whatever else and uh you know building doing some lore building and all that stuff so it's been really fun but i've been able to kind of stretch a little bit more artistically um in a way that is important to me um i you guys see like as far as other whiskey tubers i might not always have like the best b-roll but I tend to try to go a little above and beyond with all the graphics and, and you know, making things look nice. So, uh, doing stuff like that, that's, it just made sense. It just made sense to me to, to flex, or not flex, yeah, flex creatively a little bit. But now I'm back, and I've actually found myself, like, wanting to film episodes of the Whiskey Dictionary, which, honestly, it's been a couple of years since I've been like, yes, let me film an episode. So I'm excited to be back in that state of mind, and I think that's really good for the channel, and it's really good for me. And the fact that I'm here on a live stream, just because, like, that's a good sign. Um, it's been a long time since I've actually wanted to live stream. And, and it has nothing to do with you guys. It's more trying to fill an hour of time. It, it just sometimes if sometimes it's a slog and you know not not every youtuber will tell you that but i bet that pretty much all of us feel that way that being said this is look at this thing spencer what the hell <laughs> look at i love doing this right look at that color oh it's beautiful put it up against the whitest white boy you're ever gonna see it's probably gonna be amazing so glad you made a four science port dude i didn't even have a choice you're, uh, you broke the rules, by the way. <laughs> it was only, although, actually, you know, I take it back. I don't think the rules are, are stated, but the whole point is supposed to be up to three whiskeys. Um, so it was only supposed to be, like, three ounces total. Uh, but that being said, I don't really care because I'm going to drink this, and there's just there's no chance this isn't going to be good. The real question will be whether it's better than the first one or not. All right, let's 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 see what uh, was going on. So smash that like button. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. Uh, holla if you love whiskey uh holla uh it's your fault for making one ounce of each bill yeah i know but you know i've got a little, little yeah i guess i could have done a quarter ounce huh i have measurements well maybe i'm not that bright <laughs> um let's see she's a one part measure didn't have to be so big <laughs> yeah i guess that's you guys are 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 uh for sure. The form just said parts, not... Yeah, no, you're totally right. I'm, I'm wrong. You're right. That's fine. It's a lot of whiskey. I love it. It's good. All right, let's see what this smells like. Oh, my gosh. It's so candy-like. It smells like, like cherry candies. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Story time. Hey. Oh, that smells so good. What is... is I think it's the 1920, though. Almost definitely. Hold on. No, it might be. I don't know. Like, I think I think the, the Old Forester and the Remus are both just heavy cherry. I don't remember the, the Woodford Double Oak very well. Hmm. That one's... This one seems to, obviously, bring a little bit more of an oak, oak uh, smell and likely flavor. This is... I'm excited for this. Um, all right. So Adam says, I'm new to spirits. Unfortunately, I made the mistake of buying Johnny Walker red. I immediately bought some green and gold label. Good decision. After to forget the prior purchase. If I piss in the red label bottle, can I bring? <laughs> um, I, oh, bring it back to the store. Okay. I was like, I don't know where you're going with that. Uh, no, they probably, because if they looked at it, they would realize it was something probably higher quality. So they'd be like, this doesn't look quite right. There's actually like some color to this. <laughs> all right this smells incredible um i don't know if you were just gaming the system but as far as bourbons go and and just this general area of the whiskey world cherry is is something i love uh so smelling that immediately and just knowing it smells like candy is is it's off to a good start So for anybody who doesn't do it, by the way, if you are nosing your whiskey, uh, leave your mouth open. But you know what? Try it in both ways, and you'll notice a difference. If you have your mouth closed while you're smelling your whiskey, to some degree, either you're going to burn your nostrils more frequently. Um, that does actually seem to help if you're nosing something high proof. But also, you at least for me, I get more notes, flavor, smells, whatever you want to call it, uh, if I have my mouth open.
So, Alex, you think Johnny Walker Red is the best cheapo scotch that you've had so far? I, What can we do better? So, what does a Johnny Walker Red actually cost? So, let's say let's say it's slightly under $20. What, what other... What other whiskeys for scotch that are that inexpensive actually taste any good? That's a really interesting question. I might I might research that and, and try to make a video about that. That sounds like something fun to explore. What is better than Johnny Walker Red for less? So. Forgot you love cherry and didn't realize it would pop with that blend. I tried to recreate a blend I've made before, but using your bottles. Mine is Remus 3, Old Forester 1920, and Old Forester 1910. Well, so, so John, I'm, I'm thinking Scotch specifically. So he says Gentleman Jack, which could be around that price. Although I feel like Gentleman Jack's usually closer to like 24, 25. Um, but yeah, I like that for a topic. I'm, I'm going to hopefully remember that. Highland Cream, that is that has potential. <laughs> better than proper 12 i'm trying to remember yes you know what when i did the black velvet versus proper 12 versus johnny walker red i actually remember it pained me because i think the johnny walker red was the best of the three um which boy like imagine just years later me having to admit that on a stream or in a video Ugh. yes but monkey shoulder is more expensive than johnny walker red i i feel pretty consistently I th i'm pretty sure um because monkey shoulder was the first thing that popped into my head too now, I'm wondering if, is Chivas Regal, is that about the same price as Johnny Walker Red? Because I would put Chivas Regal above J, JW. After I lose 50 pounds, I'll be celebrating with some. Yeah, well, good luck, John. All right, let me go ahead and have a taste of this, because I'm just, like, sitting here smelling it. It's so f fruity, cherry. It almost smells like if you were to sherry finish a bourbon. It's just so red. All right, let's go ahead and have a taste. Cheers. Hmm. okay okay so that's that's interesting and and let me explain so first things first i kept waiting part of the reason that was in my mouth so long is i kept waiting for it to burn and it never did and so 50 percent 57 percent and probably 40 um or maybe 43 what is this guy 45 okay so i mean we're talking roughly math is hard we call it like 51 52 percent some somewhere in there um yeah i mean that's not necessarily gonna burn but i could i could see this is interesting i'm wondering if the double oak be not just because it's less ABV, but because oak flavor tends to have, at least for me, if you were to take a higher proof whiskey and had aged it in multiple barrels of, of oak, like obviously that's going, uh, depending on the barrels that you use, it's going to mellow it out faster, right? Like if you have a brand new barrel and you put whiskey in it, um, you're going to mellow it out within about six months, about as much as it's going to, unless you're talking a lot of years. So then if you take double oak and you take barrel one and barrel two, barrel two is now going to add another six months of that of that mellowing. But I don't recall enough about Woodford Reserve to know if they're using first fill um, or, yeah, if it's like finished in a second oak barrel. It doesn't say, because if it's like a third use bourbon barrel, that's not going to help as much. Bourbon finished in new, heavily toasted, lightly charred barrels. Okay, so yeah, that's gonna that's gonna mellow it out like real fast. Um, I think that that's taking any sort of the burn that you might be getting, especially from the the Remus. I remember the Remus being a little bit more burny than the Old Forester. Um, interesting though. All right, so so getting back to that, it is smooth, like the whole way, which is wonderful. The taste. It doesn't live up to the nose quite as much as I had hoped, but I'm about to have a second sip here in a minute. Hmm. Yeah, man, that's so that's so smooth. There, like that just went down smoother than water. Um. Man, that's really good. Okay, this here's where here's where I'm gonna give it negatives though. 
I feel like Remus and Old Forester alone taste better than this blend. But both of those will have the negative of burning a little too hot. I think both of those drink a little hotter than they should. This one mellows it out. But it also kind of removes some of the character from from the Remus and the Old Forester. That being said, I'm wondering if I were to have let this sit for a while, if it would be better. I don't know. This is gonna. This is actually more of a more of a decision than I was expecting it to be, based off how it smelled. All right, let's see what I what I might have missed in the chat here. I hear you guys get the Toki from Beam Suntory for twenty two. Yeah, that's actually that's not a bad point. It's not a not a Scotch though. Um. Yeah, no more sugary drinks. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you, John. Man, I love Coke. I, I try so hard not to drink soda, but like maybe once or twice a week I'll have a can of Coke. And I don't want to not have it in the house because occasionally I like to have... I, mean, I still drink Jack and Cokes pretty pretty frequently. Um, it's just, it's like my, my uh, what do you call it? It's a uh, guilty pleasure. You know, I have this behind me and I'll be like, yeah, pour some Jack in that Coke. <laughs> You know, occasionally I'll pick something from back here and I'm just like, why would I waste anything good when I could just have like an ice cold Jack and Coke? But yeah, summer's almost over. Let's see. Hey, Bill, glad to see you picked one of my submissions. I'm watching this a bit behind. So technically you're in the future now waiting to see what you think still. All right. So that was Mike. So uh, let's see. I think he had the first one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, so Mike, when you do eventually catch up, know that I'm still considering both between yours and Spencer's. Um, my senses are not as refined as John. Don't even worry about it, dude. Honestly, like the only reason that I got even half decent and I do not have the best nose in whiskey tube by far. Um, I would say probably either, either that or he's has a really good game. I think Jason from the mash and drum is probably one of the, the best, uh, of all of us, you know, obviously like Fred Minnick doesn't count cause he's, that's his job. Um, but I, as when it comes to smelling like bourbons, I think Jason's got pretty much everybody beat. Um, I don't wa watch a whole lot of ADHD whiskey. I know he won that award. Um, so he m probably is like really good as well. Um, I just haven't seen much of his stuff. All right. Uh, let's see. My senses are not as refined. Uh, yeah, it's a decent blend, blah, blah, blah. I tend to like sugary. Yep. Okay. Uh, I got a really nice combo of solid ABV, the fruity MGP plus a layer of oak. Wonder if time makes that much of a difference. So Steve, do you have this exact blend? I know that you said that you, I, th I think you said that you were able to do that. Um, that's why I like Coke Zero and ch Cherry Coke Zero. Yeah, man. So, what do you guys think? Like, Coke Zero, obviously, it's still, like, total junk for your body. Um, oh, yes, Scott from Scotch Test Dummies. Yeah, for sure. He's he's definitely, uh, I, I know he had COVID for a while, and hopefully, I know he's over that, but hopefully he didn't lose much of his edge. Um, but he's got a great sense, too. Um, actually, Roy, Roy's pretty good, too. Obviously, Ralphie. Um, Ralphie's another one that you just, you like, don't even name. <laughs> He's, like, Ralphie and Fred Minnick are, like, way up here, and then the rest of us mere mortals. Um, so. Okay, store pickle Woodford, but that's probably not making much of a difference. If you like it, next stop, um, Isla with, oh, okay, you guys are giving, giving John some, uh, some advice. Awesome. Very suppressed sense of smell, but when I do a nosing, I can really feel the fragrance. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you, John. Um, it's tough. It's very hard to get into nosing whiskey and have any clue what you're doing. Um, you know, I guess self-plug, but honestly, I made the, the video specifically for this reason. I have two videos which uh, didn't do great as far as views, but I felt like they were fairly good videos. There's one called How to Nose Whiskey and How to Taste Whiskey. If you look at my channel page, there's a whole bunch of playlists, and there's one called, I think it's called like whis Whiskey Info and Guides. In there, you'll find how to know whiskey and how to taste whiskey. And a lot of the advice that I give is pretty much just more like, let's say you buy a bourbon, you know you're going to taste or smell oak, you're going to taste and smell vanilla, and you're going to taste and smell caramel, like 90% of bourbons. Um, the only ones that aren't going to taste like that are ones that are heavily altered by something else. There's also other stuff that you're typically going to get. You're going to get like butterscotch, which is kind of an offshoot of caramel as far as I'm concerned. Um, and then sometimes you'll get cherry. Uh, sometimes you'll get orange. Sometimes you'll get lemon. You'll often get honey. Like all of these things are in most bourbons. So what you want to do is go get those items and smell them. <laughs> you know, it sounds silly, but like 
Go buy an orange. Smell the rind. Zest it. Smell that. Crack it open. Smell that. Take a bite. Smell it what it tastes like after you've broken that cellulose. Like it's there's four or five different smells that an orange can make, if not more. And all of those could have some part in the whiskey that you are drinking. And people will look at you like you're crazy when you tell them that you're smelling orange in a in a whiskey that they totally don't smell it in. But you'll have that memory. And and if you go out and Here's the important part, and the reason that I'm even saying, like, go buy the thing and then make it a point to do the, do that specific thing. You guys all know, nosing or smells are extremely tied to memories, right? So if you do a specific activity that is 100% related to just smelling that thing, you are going to remember it way better than just being like, oh, yeah, like, that's I think that's what an orange smells like. You're going to be like, no, I freaking shove my face into a split open orange <laughs> for this reason. And, uh, you know, I mean, you talk to a chef, they're going to be doing the same stuff. Like they are smelling everything. Like I, I love to cook and I do the same thing at, at a, or I used to anyway, like a long time ago when I was really learning to cook is like, I would go to a supermarket and if I was going to buy something, like I'd smell it and, and just kind of try to remember that. And that was long before I got into whiskey. And I'm sure that that helps. Because there's been some weird notes that I've picked out that are from doing exactly that. Anyway, all right. Uh, the oak has started dominating the finish. All right, let's see how this one's turned out after a couple more minutes of talking. So real quick, anybody who's who stopped by, I know I don't stream very often. I'm planning on streaming more consistently. I'm going to try to pick this time every week. Um, but I do want to just thank you all for coming. I mean, I've got almost 30 people in the chat and considering this is something I think I put up this morning. Um, I really appreciate you all coming. Uh, just the fact that you saw it and that you're, you're in. So I appreciate all of everybody who's here and I hope to grow this audience. It'll be, it'll be great to just have more people in the chat talking whiskey and hey, hanging out. So, um, let's see. Love Bricolati. Yeah, me too. Ugh, Bricolati. Everything by them. Everything. Uh, let's see. Getting some stutter now. And auto it's not me. Promise. And that's okay. I enjoy a nice oak bomb every now and then. Okay. Uh, good news is that Coca-Cola products rocketed up in price. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um. Hey, Emily Chambers is here. Not all oranges smell same. Oh, yes. Very good point, Emily. Buy a blood orange. Buy a mandarin. Buy a navel. Buy a clementine. You know? Like, there's probably 40,000 different types of oranges, and at some point it gets a little redundant. But there's no reason you can't go what's it gonna cost you five dollars to buy six different types of oranges you know and that's something that you could remember now the fun part is when you and this won't necessarily help your diet that you were talking about but the fun part will be when you're like all right what does caramel taste like what does that smell like because then you got like salted caramel you get milk chocolate with caramel you get dark chocolate with caramel you get like uh caramel candies you have caramel that's like gooey you have there's a hundred of you guys don't need me to tell you about caramel because i'm going to just make you all hungry but there is so many different things that you can smell that you like even those aroma kits right those are cool like really cool because it can kind of do what i'm talking about here but even then you're gonna have a little vial that says caramel on it you're gonna smell it and be like oh yeah that's caramel but like which type is it is it hard candy is it soft is it like overcooked caramel because that's a thing you know like also just you can consider the fact that something can be warm like sugar right I 100% I have talked about oh wow this smells sugary but there's a difference between warm sugar and like granulated sugar you know you you kind of get like a dusty little bit to the granulated sugar but with warm sugar you're smelling like almost sugar cookies right and that, it's it's all different you guys don't need me to talk about this although I totally could um, alright let's have another sip at some point I have to pick a winner I'm kind of putting that off um, this one this one's tough. I think this may may come down to whether I'm in the mood for a scotch or a bourbon, though. All right. So I'm going to give the, the Octomore one more little taste just to make sure, because I want to be fair. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. You know, this isn't bad either, though. It's just going to be hard to pick this. But as far as a blend, I like what this did. Um, so this one's the Octomore and the the Cast Strength um, Red Breast. I like what they did with this as far as muting some of the flavor of the Octomore. 
but that inherently is making it worse than than the Octomore is. It makes it more drinkable, but the whole point of Octomore is to be insane, right? So, all right, for sure, Octomore is in third place, but I really, really liked the concept. So good job. So now I have, for anybody who's somewhat new to the stream and maybe didn't see it, these are the two I'm deciding between. So Michael K submitted two parts, McKellen 12, one part rare breed bourbon. And then uh, Spencer submitted two parts Remus Repeal 4, one part Old Forester 1920, and one part Woodford Reserve Double Oak. And those are the two I'm trying to figure out. Hmm. Okay, let's try the Highland Park, or not Highland Park, <laughs> let's try the McKellen 12 again. See, now this smells like butterscotch, which is interesting because there's very little um very little going on here that i guess maybe that's coming from the rare breed that's interesting actually that that must that was not here originally um this is now picking up a lot more bourbon notes whereas before it was pretty heavy sherried as far as the the nose goes now this is probably going to taste like it used to taste like earlier in the stream but it's interesting to know that the sherry notes have almost completely evaporated and now we're leaning more heavy into the the uh, bourbon Mm. wow that's wild it's turned completely if I would have tried this now this would be an entirely different different thing um, most of the sherry notes are kind of gone whereas before it was tasting a lot more like the McKellen and it still kind of does I'm starting to now taste the rare breed and that's shocking um, I really didn't think it was going to come through at all when I tasted it before so that's almost like like a third drink at this point, or fourth. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and try this. By the way, for anybody who's considering leaving like right on time, just hang tight. Hold on. I promise to get you out of here in time to go see the Scotch uh, to Four Dummies if you would like to. Hmm, that one's gonna be hard to beat though. Hmm. Okay, I'm ready to make a decision. And I think I've got to give it to you, Spencer. Um, Spencer, this is fantastic. I can tell you worked on this. I know you, you mentioned that you kind of had something similar going on here. This is really good. This is the reason I picked this one over this one, right? So th the, the one that is... <sighs> this one here ended up becoming, again, better than the sum of its parts. And the, the pieces balance against each other really, really well. Whereas this one, I mean, obviously it turned it turned its flavor a little bit, but I'm gonna more go off the initial flavor. Even even this, like I, I actually think this is probably not as good as when I first tried it. Um, but the initial flavor of just that McKellen versus the the red breath, uh, sorry, the rare breed, it did a really good job of giving it more robustness and giving it more flavor, but it it wasn't as much on purpose feeling as this one. Like, I could see doing this and actually selling this and telling people, this this is really good. This is a combination of these things. We're going to call it something awesome because it's, like, practically red. You're going to call it something awesome. And and this would be a fan favorite. I think this is a really good blend. So, Spencer, awesome job. Congratulations. And now here's the little thing I was promising you guys. So the one thing I do at the end of Bill's Blend Bill's Bar, even though there's only been one so far, I'm going to take the, the Laphroaig Glencairn dipped in Maker's Mark wax, because it's awesome. And I'm going to, I'm going to attempt to do this in equal parts, because there's quite a bit of this. So we'll dump that. We'll dump this entire thing. And, yeah, this one's going to fall a little short, but that's okay. I'm going to give that just a little second here. I'm going to give that just a little second. And then we're going to take a little sippy do. That is really good. <laughs> wow, that's really good. The Octomore almost disappears, though, except for the finish, which is surprising. Um, it makes sense that the the uh, McKellen's going to get lost in the other one because there wasn't a ton of it left. But I was expecting the Octomore to just totally dominate this thing, and actually it's 
it almost gives a little bit of a smokiness to the bourbon that you you created there, Spencer. That actually ended up being really good. I like this. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm going to drink this while I'm watching uh, that Lord of the Rings show. So, awesome job. Um, all right, cool. Well, Spencer, I'm going to be seeing you tomorrow night anyway, so I'm going to pour some of these together, and I'm going to hand them to you in, in person, so save on shipping, I suppose. But regardless, you put an awesome blend together, and uh, so, sorry, I keep forgetting. Mike, I keep wanting to say Kyle because he was the second guy. Mike and Kyle, you guys both put together a great blend. Mike, yours was very good. It was actually a difficult, difficult decision to choose between the two. So, thank you everybody for joining me here on the Whiskey Dictionary. I hope you have an awesome rest of the awesome rest of your night and cheers. <laughs>